Hey guys, I've been away from video making for the past few days, which I know with Witch Queen being out, not a good idea, but I've had some personal stuff going on, which is all taken care of now. But if you all could be the sponsor of today's video, perhaps leave a like or maybe comment to help boost the video up a little bit, because I've been away for a few days, I'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening, enjoy the video. Do you guys smell that? Kinda smells like, oh God, I'm fucking, <laughs> Kinda smells like another weapon set review. You see, with every new expansion in Destiny 2, we usually find ourselves getting an entirely new destination to explore and pillage, and with the Witch Queen, that is no different. With every new destination comes a new weapon set as well, and that's what we're gonna be dissecting today. So today, we're taking a look at all nine weapons that can be gotten through Sabathun's throne world, going over how to get them, what their god rolls are, and ranking them from best to worst. So without further ado, Let's jump into this. First up, before we talk about the Throne World weapon god rolls, we of course need to go over how to actually get and farm the weapons themselves. Also do remember that when farming these to be on the lookout for red border drops because Throne World weapons are in fact craftable once you unlock their patterns via farming enough, so keep that in mind. Anyways, Throne World weapons are split up into three categories when it actually comes to getting them. Those that can be found just by doing anything in the Throne World, those that come from the Wellspring activity, and those that must be first unlocked through reputation and then will start dropping normally. Let's first start with Wellspring. This is the six man activity that unlocks after completing the campaign and it rotates between four Throne World weapons on a daily basis. These weapons are Father's Sins, Tarnation, Fell Taradiddle, and Come to Pass. With them only dropping from Wellspring, getting a god roll can be a pain, but once you get enough red drops to unlock the pattern, you won't need to worry about insane levels of RNG anymore. Next up, we have the weapons that need to be unlocked via rep before they start dropping, and by weapons, I mean weapon. The weapon in question is the Scout Rifle Pointed Inquiry, and this will be the 6th rank reward that you get from Finch, and chances are you'll either already have it unlocked, or be pretty close to it by the end of your first campaign playthrough. If you still need more rep though, definitely feel free to check out my Throne World rep guide, link in the description. Lastly, we have the weapons that will just drop from about anything in the Throne World, and to reiterate, upon unlocking the Scout at Finch, it will also start to drop alongside these weapons. These weapons are the Empirical Evidence, Likely Suspect, Forensic Nightmare, and Red Herring. They can be gotten through pretty much any activity in the Throne World, but are currently the most farmable via the Finch Reputation Farm that I talked about earlier, where you just need to farm out chests that are gotten through the Deep Sight buff. Now that you know how to get all the weapons, let's finally jump into their god rolls and rank each weapon from best to worst. Kicking things off today, I want to talk about my number one pick from the Throne World weapon set, and that is the Fell Taradiddle, or Taradiddle Kinetic Bow. <clears throat> a crude redemption who? Yeah, that's right. Fell has completely dethroned a crude redemption and has become the new best in slot kinetic bow. Not only is it a better frame by being lightweight, but it's consistently farmable, has a wider array of perks, and can also be crafted, meaning that those perks can be made even better. While Fell can roll with your traditional archer's tempo and explosive head roll, which is the one that I recommend above all else, its perk combos don't end there for those of you guys that want a different playstyle. Depending on the kind of player you are, you can take advantage of Fell's crazy draw time and run something like One For All in the final column, or even pair Archer's Tempo and Successful Warm Up to make yourself a kinetic version of the old Hush Combat Bow. With Fell's draw time being so fast, you could also go the route of ignoring Archer's in the first column and perhaps rolling with Shoot to Loot and then Explosive Head for an interesting GM roll. I could see myself using that personally if I ever ran Divinity and had Fell as my kinetic slot. Explosive Head would make it super easy to grab ammo from far away, and it could be a super fun playstyle of both damage dealing and utility. Either way, this bow is phenomenal and is my number one pick out of the weapon set. Up next from the new king of kinetic bows, I want to talk about my number 2 overall pick, and that's actually going to be the Red Herring Void Rocket Launcher. With the new changes to rocket archetypes, Red Herring fits nicely in the middle as the second strongest of all the archetypes in terms of individual rocket damage, but it also has something that currently no rocket in the game can benefit from, and that is the enhanced field prep perk, which in theory will give this rocket way more sustainable DPS throughout raid encounters because it's going to give you way more reserves. Combine this with the 20% damage buff that Lasting Impression has, and perhaps a teammate using Galley to further buff the potential of this rocket, and you guys 
got yourself a really great pick for raid situations. This rocket might not have intrinsic tracking like some of the precision frames do, but it makes up for that in damage per shot, as well as overall reserves for those fights that last a little bit on the longer side. Pretty great rocket overall, and I definitely see myself crafting and leveling one in the near future. Moving on from Red Herring, we have a weapon I've been waiting for since I first saw it teased inside a TWA before Witch Queen, and that is the Forensic Nightmare SMG. This is our first proper taste of a full auto stasis weapon, and with it being a slower RPM with higher damage per shot, it makes perks like headstone much easier to proc. I've crafted myself a perpetual motion and headstone roll of this SMG, and I've been having an absolute blast synergizing the damage type with my diamond lance titan. I know a lot of people are high on void weapons right now due to void 3.0 and all the new content, but don't overlook forensic nightmare. It might not be the craziest weapon for in game content, but it's absolutely a blast when playing in casual content, so big recommend picking this up if you're a fan of stasis. Now just because I was gassing up a stasis weapon doesn't mean I've forgotten about my void brethren, because let me tell you something, this fusion rifle I'm about to discuss is truly special, and that is the likely suspect. This rapid fire frame fusion is giving me heavy Cartesian coordinate vibes back when that was the meta, mainly because of its perk pool though. Running the god roll of stats for all and one for all is going to boost this weapon's damage to almost feeling like particle deconstruction and its reload speed on top of that is just a chef's kiss. Combine this with the crazy void meta that we're in and you can use this fusion as a means of clearing out rooms and rooms of ads with no problem. Explosions galore with the mod Volatile Flow on top of the crazy damage from One For All is just fantastic. We also have a future aspect coming after the raid that will allow you to proc the Volatile debuff with Void Weapons by getting grenade kills. So when that aspect drops, a role like Stats For All and Wellspring might not be a bad call, as combining that with a Controverse Warlock just sounds disgusting. With Likely Suspect being a special weapon as well, you can also run the new and very overpowered Osteostriga as your primary and have a monster of a loadout with both of these things combined. Moving on from Likely Suspect, we have a weapon that could truly shake up the meta in the world of sniper rifles if Bungie again ever decides to buff them, and that is the Father's Sins Rapid Fire Sniper. With a roll like Tac Mag, Triple Tap, and Focus Fury, you actually have yourself a super solid rapid fire frame that could be used for DPS. Only problem being is that, yeah, Firing Line would be a slightly better option here, and snipers just in general aren't that high up on the DPS viability ladder. I wanted to include the sniper fairly high in the video though, because I truly think that it at least has some form of potential in the sandbox, but maybe just not now. Now up next from the Father's Sins, we have another Void Weapon, but this one I really, really don't like. Uh, here we have the Pointed Inquiry. Now, this scout rifle belongs to the high impact frame archetype, and if I had to sum up this scout in just a few words, I'd say, just use Vouchsafe. Hell, they even made farming Vouchsafe easier now with the Umbral Ingram system this season, so literally just farm Vouchsafe. Now, I know there are going to be some of you guys in the comments that are going to say, Oh, Joey, but have you seen the Genesis and Adaptive Munitions perk combo? And yeah, I have, but I don't see how that makes this weapon desirable. Point of Inquiry is in a bad archetype. It's in a heavily contested element slot, as well as having subpar perks. In no situation would I ever take Adaptive Munitions on a weapon of mine, unless I could also pair it with a damage perk as well. It's simply useful in two niche of situations, and if you're playing match game content, either you're running in a team that should have all the elements covered, or you're doing something solo like a Law Sector, and you can just run Arbalest to not only cover Anti-Barrier, but also every single shield that you come across. The best perk roll on this scout is 4th times or stats for all with Focus Fury, and that's just not even close to making this weapon worth using in my opinion. Just stick to Vouchsafe here, folks. Okay, so segueing on over from Inquiry, I feel like I need to say this every single time a new season rolls around and heavy geos are introduced, but I guess I'll do the same here. Here we have the Tarnation Rapid Fire Frame Arc Heavy GL, so let's make this quick. Heavy GLs are not good for ad clear. Why? Because there are plenty of special weapons that can do it much better due to ammo economy. Heavy GLs are not good as a DPS option unless they have full court, and even then, they're arguably not all that great. Does Tarnation have full court? No. Tarnation does have the role of field prep and one for all though, and depending on the situation, if ads are nearby and you can get one for all to proc before laying into a boss, there is some massive potential there, although it's unlikely you'll be in very many scenarios like that. 
As usual, these weapons are fun, but almost always you should never use this to take up your heavy slot in any kind of serious content for PvE. Up next from Tarnation, we have a weapon that I'm going to make very quick work of. <clears throat> Here we have Come to Pass. Come to Pass is a very bad weapon. It has good rolls like Triple Tap, Stats for All, and One for All, but where it falls short is both in its archetype and its element. The archetype is bad, and the element is currently contested with another craftable weapon known as the Sweet Sorrow, which is arguably the best elemental auto rifle in the game right now, and single-handedly it makes this weapon worthless in the sandbox. The only reason Come to Pass isn't last is due to the potential that high impact autos get a buff in the future because if substantial enough, Come to Pass could very well be a meta option given the perk selection it currently has. That day has yet to come though, so this auto rifle will stay near the bottom of the list, and I'm just gonna have to come to pass on this one. Okay, that, that really sounded dirty, and it was also like a dad pun. I'm very disappointed in myself. Anyways, lastly for the video, we have what a lot of you guys were probably expecting to be last, the sidearm empirical evidence. Now, I know a lot of you guys think of me as a genuine sidearm hater, and for the most part, you're right, let's be honest, but normally I'm a fan of burst and automatic sidearms exclusively, and even though this weapon fits that mold, its perk selection is just underwhelming to say the least. Its best perk combination is probably Perpetual Motion and Adagio, but I genuinely just don't recommend wasting your time with this gun. You would need to sink so many resources into leveling this thing up, selecting the roles you want, enhancing them, and that's going to be for something that has no late game viability and is underwhelming even in the easiest content. With all that said though, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's video. I definitely gotta say, I'm very disappointed with this weapon set compared to the set from Risen, but with standout picks like Fell, Teradiddle, Likely Suspect, Forensic Nightmare, etc., I can't entirely hate on it. This set features 9 weapons in it, and only 3 or so I'd say are top of the line and the rest fall off kinda hard. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for me today, but thank you guys so much for watching all the way up into this point in the video, it really helps the video and the channel out a lot, thank you guys so much for all the support that you throw my way in general, new videos coming soon, and I'll see you guys next time.